to get started, I chose to sketch out a word that we've been working with this semester called limitations. And sometimes we've talked about limitations actually bringing you to another place and pushing your creativity level. So we're talking about embracing our own limitations um, and connecting to um, Phil Hansen as well. So what, what I decided to do is take the word limitations and do some different things with it to kind of show what limitations are. For instance, the T is a little shorter than this T over here. So I put it on a ladder because we solve our limitations in creative ways. And this T is broken, but you can still read it. This edge kind of comes behind that, but it's still readable. It's really important that the sign is readable. Whenever you're creating a sign, you want people to know what you're, what you're saying. So if you, if you do some things to make it so that when you step back from it, that it's not readable, you're going to have issues. So I've chosen to work with analogous um, purple group. Um, I, I like that one just because it has a, a wide range of colors. So I have on my palette created a purple, a blue, and some, sometimes the color doesn't show up exactly the same on my screen, but for the most part you can kind of see it. This one's a purple, this one's a blue, there's a white one here, there's a pink that's just a light red, here's a red here, um, there's a lighter blue, and then there's a black that I can work with, and then this is a deeper blue that I've been mixing. So what I'm working on first is working on the background so that as I work myself forward, I can, um, I can kind of bring the foreground on top of the background is going to be the letters in this case. Um, so I'm going to start working, I've started creating this box type shape background you want to break up your space a little bit so you don't have too much of one color. And I'm going to push my sleeves up really high so that I don't accidentally drag my arm through it and end up ruining my sleeves. And I've got a smock on, so that'll help. Whenever you get water to use for this, you only want it about this full in the bottom. You only need enough to wash out a brush, and then you're going to scrub out your brush later. So when you get your water container, um, you want to make sure it's, it's clean of all the clay so you don't have clay on it and then you want to make sure that your water is clean. So to work back here, I'm going to start blending. I've decided I kind of want to make this move its way up and have the brighter colors on the word limitations. In the background, I want to kind of fade into the background. So now I'm going to be working over top of mine. I suggest you don't. The reason I'm doing it is so that you can see. So make sure you don't put your color palette over top. I might even protect mine a little bit with my napkin as long as it's dry so that I don't accidentally get color where I don't want it to go. The one really good thing about acrylic is you can paint over it if you do have an accident with it. Um, so I'm going to paint this section back here and this is blue back here but it's a light blue so I might pick up a little bit of blue paint here and start to blend it in. I don't want it to be too extreme though because I want, it, I want that background to fade into the back. So what I'm going to do is take just a little bit of white and soften it a little bit now it's going to fade into this one if I don't do something. So what I'm going to do is kind of blend out some of this color a little bit. And then I'm going to pick up a purple so that it becomes a different tone. And I'm going to pick up more white. So I'm mixing on my paper. I want it to be a different kind of color. So this is almost a bluish purple, which is a tertiary color. As I get close to my edge, as I get closer to my edge, I want to be careful to push my brush and drag and it creates a stronger edge. Um, this is not different enough for me. This is too close to that blue, so I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of red and mix it in with it so that I'm starting to get a different kind of look, something different, so that they're not going to just all blend in together. When I get close to an edge, I push and drag with my brush. So I wanna be careful. Sometimes kids do this and it makes it really fuzzy looking. We wanna push and drag. And I do a lot of mixing right onto the paper because I don't want this all to be one color. I want it to kind of blend. And I think I want that just a little bit lighter. And that it helps me be able to make decisions. I could go darker here at the letter. And then as it fades out, it gets lighter. Okay? So like maybe out in here it's going to get lighter. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my white. And now my brush is really loaded down with paint. So I put that white on there. Now I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to hold this one in my hand. I'm going to get a brush that's more dry so I can blend it a little bit better. 
So I, I usually end up holding like several brushes in my hand and it's fine. As long as everybody has enough brushes, it's okay with me if you have several. And then I can get more of a blended kind of look. It doesn't have to be all one tone. It can be different tones. And I want this a little darker here still. So I'm gonna pick up my brush that I had a minute ago, come back in and kind of blend that out. So I'm playing around with brushes. And then I also wanna play around with like the look of the piece as I go. Really pay attention to your edges. This one's getting really, like as soon as I started dragging, it started getting dry because my brush is dry. So I'm gonna to switch to my uh, brush that has more paint on it then drag with it. If you start getting shaky, one thing you can do is put your fist down and put your hand on top. It's called creating a bridge. And that's really shaking and you can't control it. What you want to do is probably change to a smaller brush. So I might, if I'm in this area, I could change to a smaller brush where I'm struggling a little bit. Paint around that edge where I want a really crisp edge then in here I could switch back to my bigger brush so that my, my paint still blends and it's not all streaky looking. So sometimes it's better to just outline with a small brush. But you gotta move kinda quick because acrylic paint does dry and it's hard to blend if, it, if it's drying. But you wanna really pay attention to what we call craftsmanship and making the whole entire area look intentional. Look like, it, you want it to look like you meant to make um, the values that are there, the colors that are there, that everything was a, a, a definite choice by your, you as the artist. Okay. I've picked up some pink and I've picked up some white and I'm going to blend into this back area so that I can get that ladder to show up. Well that ladder is so light or so skinny that it's going to be hard for me to show it up. So what I'm going to do is add some light color in right on top of it so that I can still see it just a little bit. And I'm dragging right next to letters. When I drag right next to letter letters, it makes a sharp edge. Now up in here, I need to switch to my different brush. Now what you can do at your seat is wash off your brush, drain it off on the side of your, um, your water container, and then kind of squeeze. What I do is I squeeze it a little bit into my paper towel so that I make sure it doesn't have too much water. If you put too much water with your paint, and you're using acrylic paints, it gets real watery, it makes your, your paper wiggle. So paint, acrylic paint is made to be um, used for the most part for the, what we call the underpainting. We want to use it pretty thick. And then I'll teach you later how to glaze. I'm picking up a little bit of red. And I'm going to twist it so that it makes the smallest brush I have super, super skinny. Okay, so I, again, I'm dipping and then I twist on my palette. And then I have a pretty steady hand, so I might be able to do this. If you don't, we can always use a marker or a Sharpie. Now it started getting dry. I either need to come back and get more paint. I'm gonna get actually just a small amount of water. Only a little, because otherwise it'll make it run. The more I push down, the thicker my brush is, so I'm careful not to do too much thickness. Another option for this is a, is a thin tip sharpie, but I don't have very many that are colors. So we have to be very careful with that. And then that blobbed a little bit, so I'm going to make that the latter part. So sometimes you just kind of work with what you got. So that'll be my ladder. Now, even though this is the same color, this is red and that's pink, they're the same color, you can see the red because I've found a contrast. Your goal is you have to be able to see your background versus your foreground. So you want to make sure that there's a contrast either with the color or the value or both preferably because you'll be able to see a lot better.